Hello, this is Jonathan Kay reporting virtually from Massachusetts on day three of ULAR 2022, which is being held in Copenhagen. There have been many very interesting abstract and other scientific sessions over the past three days, which have addressed the spectrum of rheumatology. At the abstract session on treatment of rheumatoid arthritis this morning, there were several presentations regarding safety of JAK inhibitors. Following publication of the oral surveillance trial earlier this year in the New England Journal of Medicine, there has been great interest in the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events and thromboembolic events among patients with rheumatoid arthritis treated with targeted synthetic and biologic DMARDs. In that trial, incidence rates for major adverse cardiovascular events were higher for rheumatoid arthritis patients older than 50 years who were treated with tofacitinib than for those treated with TNF inhibitors. In abstract OP0266, Axel Fink of Geneva University Hospital in Switzerland presented safety data on JAK inhibitors from an international collaboration of 16 national rheumatoid arthritis patient registries. The jackpot study was designed to assess real world safety of JAK inhibitors compared to other biologic agents in rheumatoid arthritis patients by evaluating treatment discontinuation for adverse events. This study enrolled nearly 44,000 rheumatoid arthritis patients, about 25,000 of whom were treated with TNF inhibitors, about 9,000 with JAK inhibitors, and the remainder with other biologic agents. Patients treated with rituximab were not included because of the difficulty in ascertaining the precise time of rituximab treatment discontinuation. Baseline characteristics of the three groups were reasonably well matched except that half of the TNF inhibitor-treated patients had not previously received a biologic or targeted synthetic DMARD, whereas only one quarter of the patients treated with either a JAK inhibitor or a non-TNF inhibitor biologic had previously been treated with a biologic or targeted synthetic DMARD. Over two years, the cumulative incidence of treatment discontinuation because of an adverse event was comparable for JAK inhibitors and TNF inhibitors, but was higher for biologic agents with other mechanisms of action. When a subgroup analysis was performed to simulate the oral surveillance trial, including the over 15,500 rheumatoid arthritis patients who were older than 50 years and had at least one risk factor for cardiovascular disease, the findings regarding treatment discontinuation for adverse events were unchanged. In contrast to the oral surveillance trial, in which the co-primary endpoints were the occurrence of a major adverse cardiovascular event and that of a malignancy, this very large multinational real-world study assessed safety by evaluating treatment discontinuation for any adverse event. It will be interesting to learn whether there's any difference in the jackpot study subgroup between JAK inhibitors and TNF inhibitors or other biologic agents in the rate of major adverse cardiovascular events or of malignancies as was observed in the oral surveillance trial. In abstract OP0258, Adeline Riesen Witrand of Toulouse University Hospital in France presented data assessing real world safety of JAK inhibitors and TNF inhibitors in rheumatoid arthritis patients by comparing safety reporting of major cardiovascular and thromboembolic events in the World Health Organization Global Individual Case Safety Report Database, VigiBase between 2011 and 2022. Over these 12 years, both physicians and non-physicians filed over 290,000 reports about adverse events occurring in rheumatoid arthritis patients who had been treated with either a JAK inhibitor or a TNF inhibitor. Over 4,000 of these reported a major cardiovascular adverse event, and over 1,400 reported a venous thromboembolic event. Use of JAK inhibitors was significantly associated with an increased risk of venous thromboembolic event reporting compared to that with use of TNF inhibitors. Although there was no overall increase in the risk of major adverse cardiovascular event reporting, the risk of major adverse cardiovascular event reporting by physicians, and specifically that of myocardial infarctions, was significantly associated with use of JAK inhibitors compared to that of TNF inhibitors. Based upon the findings of the oral surveillance trial, the FDA issued an alert in 2021 about the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events and of venous thromboembolic events with JAK inhibitors. When the odds ratios of physician reporting to Vigibase of major adverse cardiovascular and venous thromboembolic events were analyzed by year, significant associations for both adverse events with JAK inhibitor use were detected in 2020, the year before this FDA alert was issued. Thus, 
analysis of spontaneous reports to Vigibase, especially those made by physicians, was able to detect early safety signals about these adverse events. This study suggests the potential validity of using this very large international spontaneous reporting database to identify new drug safety issues. It would be ideal to have a biomarker that could be used to determine whether a rheumatoid arthritis patient could be treated with a JAK inhibitor and not be at risk for a cardiovascular adverse event. In abstract OP0269, Zoltan Sekinich of the University of Debrecen in Hungary presented Pfizer's post hoc analysis of the oral surveillance trial in which they searched for biomarkers to predict the risk of venous thromboembolism in rheumatoid arthritis patients receiving treatment with either tofacitinib or a TNF inhibitor. 294 biomarkers were assessed, of which 79 were pre-selected based on their known role in inflammation, coagulation, vascular biology, or JAK signaling. Each was quantified in serum or plasma that had been collected at baseline and at month 12 from 59 subjects who had experienced venous thromboembolic events during the trial, and from over 3,600 age, sex, and treatment-matched controls. Unfortunately, this post hoc exploratory analysis did not identify any biomarker that correlated with the increased risk of venous thromboembolism observed with tofacitinib compared to TNF inhibitors in the oral surveillance trial. The small number of events and blood sampling restricted to only two time points may have limited the ability to identify a predictive biomarker. Thus, clinical assessment of venous thromboembolic risk must be used when deciding whether to initiate tofacitinib or another JAK inhibitor in a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. I have reviewed three abstracts, each of which addressed cardiovascular safety of JAK inhibitors in patients with rheumatoid arthritis using different approaches. This very important topic warrants further study to elucidate the mechanism by which cardiovascular adverse events may occur with drug treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. I look forward to more presentations about this and other topics. For more information about these and other presentations at ULAR 2022, go to roomnow.com. I'm Jonathan Kay. I'll see you again tomorrow.